Hello friends, it's Amber and welcome to my first top of the pile slash TBR video of 2022. Hello, welcome back or if you're new watching for the first time, welcome to my channel. My name is Amber. I make vlogs, book videos, talk about productivity, self-care, all that good stuff on this channel. So if you haven't already, why not subscribe so you don't miss any other videos. And if you've never seen a top of the pile video before, it's where I go over all the books that I'm going to read in the current month or hope to read. I am not the kind of reader who can just like pick a TBR and commit to it but I do tend to have like a huge pile that I know I'm going to not read all of but pick from and that's what I want to talk about in this video. So February is obviously the shortest month and <laughs> so obviously February is the shortest month of the year but some for some reason in the past I feel like February ends up being the month that I read the most in. I really hope to read more books in February than I did in January. I read six I think books in January. I'm filming this on the last day of January so fingers crossed that maybe I'll get another book in. But last year was like a big romance year for me. It was definitely my Kindle Unlimited year where I discovered all these new fun fast romance reads that really got me through the harder parts of 2021 but I'm really missing the genres that kind of like grounded me and my love of reading fantasy, YA fantasy, adult fantasy, literary fiction, like good contemporary emotional novels that you get invested in that take me a little bit longer to get through but are always just like so good to me. So I'm hoping to balance my love of good steamy romance with my love of every other genre and hopefully find some new favorite reads and authors and subgenres in that too. So this stack this pile is a pretty good mix of all the things i'm hoping to dip my toe into in 2022 so let's get started because i have a lot of books to get through because i see this being a long video i'm just gonna go ahead and get ready to hydrate because i'm about to talk for a while this is a blueberry pomegranate bubbly by the way in case you're invested in my sparkling water. Okay, so the first book on the top of my pile is The Crier's War by Nina Varela. This is a sapphic fantasy book that follows two women. One is human, the other is an autonome, which I guess I'll find out what that means later. Here's the thing, me and sci-fi, we like sometimes gel really well, but I do better when it's sci-fi and a book with fantastic elements and just a strict sci-fi book. So I'm optimistic about this one, but there are two girls. One is human, one is an autonome. The autonome is basically used to be like the subservient class. And then there was, I guess, a war or a revolution and they became the ruling class. So now the king and everyone out, the royals, they're all these non-human creatures. And there's another girl who's human, who is a servant to the royal family and she wants to avenge her family's death, her human family's death. And I think that those two girls end up falling for each other. But this one, yeah, is doing the rounds on TikTok. The girls are loving it and I've heard great things. It has really good ratings and reviews on Goodreads as well from reviewers who I really respect and tend to do well when they review books. Love those books too, so excited for this one. This next book is also doing the rounds on TikTok and that is Neon Gods by Katie Roberts. This book was actually recommended to me after I read another book on Kindle Unlimited. It was like if you like that then you'll love this. So I was gonna get it on Kindle and then I popped into Barnes and Noble and saw that it was there and I feel like you are just now starting to see some of these like steamier romances available in paperback or in physical copies so that's exciting to me but this one is a Hades and Persephone retelling and I've been told that it's very steamy and very good and that Katie Roberts writing is just like really fun to read so I'm excited for this one for sure. I also love that this is kind of combining my want to read more fantasy with like my love of steamy romance it's like the best of both worlds. This next one I'm pretty sure I've either included in a book haul or in another top of the pile video but that is Love in Color by Bolu Babalola. This is an anthology of love stories all set in African and Caribbean countries. I wanted to read this forever. I keep putting it off. I don't know why because I love an anthology and I love a love story. February, you know, it's Valentine's Day this month. It seemed like the nice, a good time to get in some romance reading and some love stories and I've heard nothing but good things and I told my friend that I would read this month ago so we could talk about it and I just have not read it yet. So I'm gonna do that this month. 
Ooh, okay, sorry for the lighting. It's winter. We are chasing sunlight and it's probably going to change again, but that's okay. We're going to roll with the punches. The next book on my pile is The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. This is another fantasy read in which a young girl has to avenge her dead mother and kill the current reigning queen called the Red Queen. Um, I know that the girl in, that has to do the avenging um, has her name is Kelsey, I think, and she was raised in exile and she learns, I guess, like the truth about her parentage and what she has to do. I've heard really good things about this one. I found this like, it's like mass market paperbacky, but a little bit wider, which is the only problem with mass market paperbacks that they're not wide enough. But I just love the way this version of it looks. This is the first book. I believe there are three books in this series and they're all out and I'm really excited to get into this I just hope I can also find the other books in the series if I like this in these really nice covers because I love this is another book that I'm pretty sure I've either hauled or put in the top of the pile before and that is Docile by K.M. Zar Zapara this is a book that's kind of like a little bit fantastical really more of like a sci-fi dystopian read with a little bit of like steamy rom not even romance just like steamy I guess like romance vibes ish but basically to be a docile is to like be how do i explain it to be a docile is kind of like to be an indentured servant the way that i understand it so basically our main character his family has a ton of debt and the only way that he would ever be able to work off all of his family's debt is to become a docile in the house of a wealthy person so basically they own you for whatever they need you to do and you don't have a say and what really drew me to this is the little like subheader on the back which it says there is no consent under capitalism so i don't know i've tried not to read too much into the synopsis and reviews of this because i know it can be it's a little bit of a polarizing read some people are totally down for it some people did not like it but i also know that books like this are really easily spoiled when you start looking too many things up and i kind of want to just see for myself so this is definitely at the top of the pile this next read is one that i got during the 50 percent off hardback sale at barnes and noble and that is skin of the sea by natasha bowen first of all can we just please take a minute for the cover like are you kidding me so from what i understand because again i'm not trying to get super spoiled for this book either it is part fantasy, part kind of real world retelling um, about mermaids. So obviously that is the fantasy portion. So this book is about um, a community of mermaids whose job is to collect the souls of people who die at sea and then prepare their souls for a journey home. But there is a slave ship and a boy is thrown overboard and our main character who's one of the mermaids saves his life which kind of goes against everything that the mermaids are supposed to be governed by and i guess she i don't know if she, i think she has to return him then back to his life on land obviously this is not your typical like little mermaid retelling at all i know it deals a lot with the history of the middle passage and slavery and i'm really excited for this book as well i've seen it get a lot of really great reviews and i'm honestly just like still blown away by this cover it's so beautiful next we have a contemporary romance novel Black Girls Must Die Exhausted by Jane Allen. Again, such a really pretty cover. I actually started this book already and then I put it down because I was like, I needed to take a minute before I could jump into a book like this, but what I read I really did enjoy. So this book, we follow our main character who's like in her 30s and she just is dealing with a breakup and realizing that if she needs to, if she wants to have a family and have kids, that she needs to make decisions about her fertility journey sooner rather than later. And she's just dealing with like the reality of being at this point in your life where you thought you had been married with kids already, but you're not and you realize you really want that and have to figure out the, a way to make that happen for yourself. In the midst of also dealing with the realities of being a black woman who works in corporate America and has to deal with racism and microaggressions and sexism at different levels than her white counterparts do. So it's, ugh so so good and i actually got the chance to interview jane allen the author of this book and i think it's going to be a a three book companion series altogether. the second book actually comes out really really soon which is called black girls must be magic but i had a conversation with jane allen on the podcast last season and she is just like amazing incredible if you need some inspiration on manifesting your dreams and really seeing something that you want become a reality because the journey to get this book from her heart to traditionally published was just astounding 
go listen to that podcast episode i'll link it down below if you want to give it a listen this next book was sent to me by viking press and i'm so excited to get into it and that is call us what we carry by amanda gorman we fell in love with amanda at least i fell in love with amanda when she read her poem what is it called the hill we climb at the inauguration and i just think that she is so talented and dynamic this collection of poetry she said she said is supposed to help us personalize and kind of come to terms with the realities of living in the pandemic which is interesting to me i think it's so just interesting how we're already seeing so much art and literature come out to reflect the time of the pandemic even though we are not done so knowing the timeline that it takes to get something like these books and novels and shows that are doing that reflection on covid um it has taken them probably at least a year and a half to do so so many of us you know left 2020 thinking we were also leaving the pandemic and yet here we are so yeah this is a poetry collection another really pretty cover her author photo on the back is also so cute she's just an absolutely beautiful woman but i'm interested to see how she is reflecting on our pandemic times together okay we have three books left take a little hydration break up next we have yes another fantasy and that is the last graduate by naomi novik to be honest i don't know if i'm gonna get to this book in february but it's definitely at the top of my pile this is the sequel to a deadly education which i finished just a few days ago and i did enjoy it i ended up giving it about three and a half out of five stars after reading the first book in the series which is set at this magical school for witches and wizards where they kind of have to learn how to control their magic and learn different spells basically kind of like come into their magical selves while also surviving the school it's very dark it's full of like monsters and creatures and it's all about alliances and getting out and surviving as best you can this is the follow-up to that i think this is also just a duology the first book does end on a bit of a cliffhanger someone that you think that you should really be able to trust you find out may not be as trustworthy as you thought so i'm very interested to see how the story continues but i did find that a lot of the characters in the first one to be very two-dimensional like there's so many characters and we don't really have a full backstory for many of them this book is a little thicker than the first one so i'm hoping that there's more room to expand upon all these people that we came to be interested in in the first book so it's definitely in the it's like in the middle of the pile but it's definitely like near the top of the pile all right two books left this one i know i hauled at some point last year because i feel like everyone was talking about ray bearer this is by jordan ifuko and it is another ya fantasy book in this book our main character has always wanted to feel accepted and to be a part of a family so when she finally comes of age she gets the chance to go to like the capital city and compete to become one i think of the chosen 11 which means she gets to live in like the court of the royals I think or something similar um, but she has to compete against all these other kids to get chosen for a spot and I think at some point she also realizes that she has some kind of magical ability this is another one that I'm trying not to spoil too much but I have not seen a single bad review for this book everyone who I know who's read it has enjoyed it this one I feel like and what's the other book Legendborn were two popular YA fantasies last year that I like could not escape every time I went on Instagram I saw them so I'm excited to finally see what the hype is all about here and the last book is another one that I've spoken about on the channel before and that is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse again this is one that I could not escape I feel like last year I saw it everywhere and always with a really positive review so I'm looking forward to getting into it it is a sci-fi fantasy-esque book set in a world that is based on um, ancient Colombian culture and mythology i believe correct me if i'm wrong i know that it has a lot of colombian cultural references in it a lot of indigenous references as well and from what i've heard this book really has it all it has queer characters characters of color just so much good representation in it this one should be good and it's also a really thick book but the print is fairly large so i feel good about that <laughs> all right and that is it for my february tbr top of the pile situation let me know if you've read any of these books if there are any that you think i should start with sooner rather than later let me know what you're reading in february i would love to hear what's on the top of your pile or if you read anything in january or the months before that were so good i need to like throw the whole pile away and read that instead let me know in the comments if you haven't already be sure to give this video a thumbs up subscribe so you don't miss future videos and i will see you all in the next one
I say you 